Alright, our season seems to be working. Uh, I am still sick, it's no uh, base camp. <coughs> Excuse me. But, uh, I want to complete this trial. So we'll continue. At the halfway point, I want to complete it. Hello! I hope your day is well! I'm trying to force myself to be more energetic, or else my mental state won't be able to keep up. <sighs> my heart's thumping like crazy. I might as well have a laid back, so what attitude and go ahead with high energy. Yeehaw! Ah, but be careful that your batteries don't run out for various reasons. And just like I say each time, don't forget to save frequently. Right, this was originally on PSP. <laughs> I... I never... expected the Funhouse itself to be the ultimate weapon. Oh well, let's just press on ahead. You're going to oh well that? I, is it really alright to accept a situation so easily? I mean, that's not what's important. The thing that's really important is... The killer who used the building structure. Like, who's Mekumaru's murderer? But is it really okay to believe the building is the weapon? Nagito said it, you know. There's no way I'd lie at such an important moment. I don't want to die either. That's a change. What happened to the bastard who kept saying how much they didn't mind dying? He's right. There was a time when I thought I could become a stepping stone for your hopes, but I will sincerely retract that remark. Retract? I'm disappointed too, you know. If this was a murder for the sake of hope, I'd happily sacrifice myself. <laughs> you say such falsehoods, per usual. So here's the thing. Nakito doesn't lie. So what did they have for does not lie. There is no such thing as murder for the sake of hope. Murder is simply murder. Do I do agree with Gundam? Forcibly sacrificing others for one's own desires. Even one as diabolical as I would avoid such actions. I see. It's fine. Let's just leave him alone and find out who killed Coach Nekomaru as fast as we can. I am still thinking Coach Nekomaru killed Coach Nekomaru. I think Nagito's right and the pattern's matching. Just so you know, it's not like I'm getting hungry or anything, you know. Uh, Akane! You're drooling waterfalls? Nagito, as usual, I can't always think of you. I'm not getting serious or not. Anyway, if the killer used the building structure, why don't we think about how they used it? How they killed Nekomaru. It might be better if we clarify the cause of death first, don't you think? Nekomaru's cause of death, huh? It's hardly damaged just if it was being sensitive with a blunt object. If it was being with a blunt object, it would be a kill that utilized the throw destruction. Oh yes, it would. I see! That's it. I think he might have died from falling. Died from falling? If the Funhouse's secret is that it's a structure where both towers and houses are vertically connected, then the killer made use of its height and caused Nekomaru to die from falling. Are you saying they pushed him off? Where'd they push him off from? He was... he was on the pillar. That, I don't know yet. <laughs> don't just make things up when you don't know the method. Where in that building would you even be able to push someone off in the first place? It might be possible in the tower. You could push him off the fourth floor when the elevator is on the first floor. Did you forget how the elevator functions? When it's on the first floor, the door on the fourth floor won't open. <laughs> Say he died from falling is truly incorrect. You should burn in the flames of hell. 
gonna, that's gonna happen anyway. Hmm. But my gut is going crazy right now. Where'd the killer show Nekamaru from? Bruce is a true pine and since they think he saw the mystery gift. There's literally a pillar. When the elevator is on the first floor, you can't go through the door on the fourth floor. Hmm. Oh, the doorknob. It'd be impossible to shove off the victim from up there. Then, how about this? After locking Mekamaru inside the elevator, they moved the elevator from the fourth floor to the first floor and made use of the drop. Hold on! Did you forget the elevator has a sensor? As long as there's a moving object inside, up oh, there it is. The other door won't Good open. Night. Which means the elevator wouldn't have moved either. That must be the threshold of that elevator. All right, I know it's a good night one, and I know it's a good speed. Not for you, Nico. Keep calling him different names. What is his name? Kazuichi? Kazuichi? I call him Gundam, I call him Fuyuhiko. Why can I not remember his name? Especially when I know who the others are. When the night, elevator is on the Kazuichi. first floor, you can't go through the door on the fourth floor. Hmm. It'd be impossible to shove off the victim from up there. Then, how about this? After locking Mekamaru inside the elevator, they moved the elevator from the fourth floor to the first floor and made use of the drop. Hold on! Did you forget the elevator has a sensor? As long as there's a moving object inside... No, that's wrong! Well, I'm about the good night for quite a lot. That sensor should only work if something is moving. If Mekamaru wasn't moving inside, Elevator sensor wouldn't have detected anything. Could it be his sleep mode? When Nekomaro's goodnight button is pressed, all of his functions shut down, and he enters sleep mode. If he's in sleep mode, the elevator sensor wouldn't have noticed it, right? I see. So that's how... However, even if they moved the elevator in that manner, Nekomaru would have just moved along with it. The wire was attached to the doorknob. There would have been no drop for him to fall and die from. Yes. That's what I was about to explain before Kazuichi interrupted me. Silence, pest! Now you're calling me a pest? Wait to create the drop inside the elevator while Nekomaru is still in it. Check seems to have an idea, but what way could that be? Obviously the wire and the broken doorknob on my keys. If you arrange it a certain way, you can cause the drop within the elevator. So you're telling us all to think about the arrangement, right? That arrangement is... The hammer is suspicious. No. Isn't it about time we went over the pillar again? What about the oil on the floor? Nope, not that. The doorknob on the floor seems suspicious. How about we all shut up and listen to what Chiaki has to say? Silence, pest! It Just is the door so cold. What if I start to enjoy it? Right. If you arrange it a certain way... You can cause the drop within the elevator. It's definitely a so you're telling us all sure to think correct. about the arrangement, Why? right? That arrangement is. It's too Hiko that The hammer is suspicious. Like I said, I know the other's names. Just keep mixing. Isn't correct. it about time we went over the pillar again? What about the oil on the floor? 
The doorknob on the floor seems suspicious. Crap! Alright, so it's the wire with the doorknob. If you arrange it a certain way, you can cause the drop within the elevator. So you're telling us all to think about the arrangement, right? That arrangement is... The hammer is sufficient. It's not the hammer. Isn't it about time we went over the pillar again? What about the oil on the floor? The doorknob on the floor seems suspicious. Stop that. There we go. I agree with that. Didn't the doorknob have scrape marks on it? That might have been where it got scraped by the wire. Is that the same wire that was tied around Nekamaru? Yep. The tip of that wire was tied into a loop. If the elevator moved while that loop part hung from the doorknob... If, if they did something like that, he would have been suspended in midair! That's right. He was suspended in midair. Huh? The killer tied up Nekamaru with the wire while he was in sleep mode. Tied the tip of the wire into a knot and hung it on the doorknob to the fourth floor. With that, they moved the elevator from the fourth floor to the first floor of Great Tower. And suspended Nekamaru in midair. That's right! He was so well hung! <laughs> Kinda like. Well, I can't if you're gonna say like you, I'm gonna mention that you got nothing there. You better not finish that sentence! The killer took advantage of the elevator's unique feature. Only the floor moves. By doing that, they created a drop so Nekamaru could fall to his death. Too easy! Why? So what if they created a drop? There's no way you can make him fall and die with just that! Why? If Nekomaru is suspended in midair like that, then how do you get him to fall? Because if he's suspended in midair, he won't die if he doesn't actually fall. That's a good point, actually. It's so copy the pillar. Even if they suspended Nekomaru from a wire, how would they make him fall? There's no one in the tower to push him off. There's no way they could do that. It doesn't mean someone had to push him off. It's possible that he fell on his own. What? Nekomaru fell on his own? Nekomaru should have still been in sleep mode, right? If he was sleeping, there's no way he could do that. <laughs> now, but in that case, you still won't be able to exploding the elevator with Nekomaru. It's just impossible. End of story. Okay, I got it. What? Nekomaru fell on his own? Nekomaru should... If he was sleeping, there's no I way he could do that. <laughs> Now's the time, but in that case, you still won't be able to exploding the elevator with Nekomaru inside. It's just impossible! End of story! What? Nekomaru? Nekomaru should have still been in sleep. Here it is. Allow me to cut through those words! This what do you think would off. happen if Nekomaru woke up while he was suspended upside down in midair? What are you saying? Like, how would he even wake up? He has an alarm inside his body. As long as it was armed, it would have deactivated his sleep mode. Which means the killer set the alarm before they suspended Nekomaru. If you woke up from an alarm and realized you were hanging upside down and had no clue why... If something like that happened to you, you would start panicking a lot, right? Instinctively, your body would start moving. Nekomaru probably did exactly that. Then, in order to make it fall from the force he was generating, the wire was hung on the tip of the doorknob so it would easily slip off. In actuality, the scrape marks caused by the wire were near the tip of the doorknob, right? 
But Neko Mong didn't fall because the wire came off, right? He fell because the entire doorknob came off. When Neko Maro awoke, he must have struggled much more than expected, which caused the doorknob to break off. Was that unexpected for the killer too? Well, that's probably it. If they knew it'd leave behind evidence like that, they would have at least tried to do something to cover it up. Sure didn't expect the door not to come off. The reason that even happened was because... Or put close power to grab the door up with both hands, but... Right! <laughs> he had already forced the door down. That's really what it was. That's the clue Nekomaru left for us to find. I see. So that's how Nekomaru fell to his death. Do you finally understand now? Yeah. It appears it's just as Miss Sonia said. I'm just a pest. No, I'm not just a pest. I'm a total fucking pig. I'm not gonna argue against that. Isn't that right, Miss Sonia? If I'm a fucking pig, you can say so! Oh boy, he's turned into Coco. No, I believe you gave your all. Hey! Why aren't you teasing me anymore? This guy, he gets off on this! So thanks to that alarm, Nekomaru ended up falling while he was still hanging upside down. That doesn't mean he just crashed straight into the floor. Of course, you know that too, right? Yeah, he hit the pillar. Well, the Nekomaru fell onto the floor. The only thing I can think of that happened to him was he collided with the pillar. I see! When Nekomaru fell to the floor, he ended up colliding with the pillar. Isn't that it? Finally, the pillar! So that's how the pillar shattered, and why oil was spilled all over the place. See? I told you the pillar was the weapon. My gut was totally right. Well, the pillar was a bonus. It's not even clear if the killer intended that, or if it was just a coincidence. At this point, it is quite difficult to find a clue that will lead to the killer. Then what about the alarm? I'm positive the alarm was set for 7.30 a.m. And if we map it out from there... Hold on, baby gangsta! Stop calling me baby gangsta! I really do like that name for him. What'd you just say? Did you say the alarm was set for 7.30 a.m.? You didn't check it yourself. Nekomaru's alarm was set for 7.30 a.m. Nah, that's impossible. Because even though I slept in a little, I still got to the tower at 7 in the morning. Yeah, the clocks were messed with. I huh? got figured this out yet. Yeah. Now that you mention it, so did I. There was no way I could be late for Monokuma Tai Chi, so I left for Grape Tower before 7 a.m. And if we found Nekomaru's body there, it would have been before the 7.30 a.m. alarm went off. It appears yet another contradiction has been birthed. How were you able to discover Nekomaru died at 7.30 a.m. when you went to the tower at 7? Because he did go to the tower at 7. Madakuma was pretty angry that he missed his Tai Chi. That's what I want to know! Well, Mr. Ignore stands here since just one after another. But I can't choke up at a time like this. Just a little more to be able to reach the truth. Should definitely be a clue to break this contradiction. One o'clock. We headed for Grape Tower. Before 7 a.m., I am certain. But the alarm inside Nekomaru's chest was set for 7.30 a.m. Nekomaru died because of that alarm, right? This time of death and the time the body was discovered. One of those must be an illusion. The killer probably did some tampering. They probably messed with the clock inside Nekomaru's chest. Nope, that's impossible. That's gotta be it!
We headed for Grape Tower. Before 7 a.m., I am certain. But the alarm inside Nekamaru's chest was set for 7.30 a.m. Nekomaru died because of the alarm, uh, right? Kakane, it looks like. It's time of death from the time the body was discovered. One of those must be an illusion. Killer probably did some tampering. They probably messed with the clock inside Nekomaru's chest. Stop that. No, that's wrong! No, the clock inside his chest was a radio clock, so it would have been impossible to mess with. So you're saying there's no way the killer could have tampered with a clock? Maybe Not the his clock, clock. Sonia saw was the one that got tampered with. The clock inside Grape House? No, I checked all the clocks inside the Fun House. Oh, that's what I asked you to do. So you really listened to me and checked all the clocks. And because of that, I can confidently declare that all the clocks had the same time displayed. If there's no possibility that the time was tampered with, then we must doubt that human's testimony. Please believe me, we are not lying. Then maybe it's a misunderstanding? Kind of, do you, do you have a crush on Sylvia? I never misunderstand. I'll crush you into dog food. Really contradiction. Like, don't pay down the test codes. Down the clock. Obviously. I'm still see that something was done, but what was it? Press to roll of something, we were misunderstanding something. We had folks that think we should be able to fight against you that this time. The deep dive. Logic dive, we keep saying deep dive because of the parts. Which 
house at the wrong time. Both houses. I went too fast. all the clocks inside the building. Isn't that right, Fuyuhiko? Yeah, none of the clocks had the wrong time. But what if all those clocks have been messed with? What? All the clocks? So even if you checked all the clocks inside the building, there's no way you'd have noticed it. I see. So the killer messed with the time inside the whole building by changing all the clocks. <laughs> so that's what it was. There's no way I would have noticed that. This is truly fantastic! Doggo, shut up. Now's not the time to be pleased. More importantly, how much was the time off? Just wait, that's the main problem. You clarify like how much the time was off in your pockets. the next mystery. We're gonna reach the truth in one go. Nekomaru's radio clock. The time of death. It's clearly 7.30 a.m. Yes. The problem is, what time did 7.30 be? In our time. Are there any clues that can be used to narrow that down? Yes. If only I heard the sound when he fell. It would have been a great clue. Or his scream. Type to let out a scream. If only Nekomaru's alarm was loud enough, we would have heard it too. There's no point in saying that. It does not exist in this world. If the time in the building was all messed up, then we can only rely on Nekomaru's radio clock. The time of death. It's clearly 7.30 a.m. The problem is, what time would 7.30 be? In our time. Are there any clues that can be used to narrow that down? If only I heard the sound when he fell. I agree with that. That's right. Don't you should have that. heard the sound he made when he fell. Wasn't it that rumbling noise? Rumbling? I thought it was just an earthquake, so I went back to sleep. Was that the sound from when Nekomaru fell? Well, a huge body fell from the fourth floor to the first, and the pillar fell with it. It's obvious we'd hear the impact sound. We heard that noise, too. It was when we were gathered at the Strawberry House Lounge. What is it, Sonia? Oh, well, that sound everyone heard? I did not hear it at all. Huh? You probably didn't hear it because you were sleeping. I could not sleep at all. I was awake the whole night with hunger pings. There's nothing to worry about. What's important is that rumbling noise anyway. If we use that rumbling sound as a reference, we might be able to figure out how much our time was off. I heard that sound probably around 5.30 in the morning. Huh? You can tell? I instantly woke up and left my room. And that's when I saw the clock in the lounge. Excellent work, Akane! The rumbling sound we heard was at 5.30 a.m. And the answer to how much our time was off is literally right in front of us. You have two hours. I see! Nekomaru's alarm went off at 7.30. And if we heard the sound of his impact at 5.30, that means our time was off by two hours. 
Two hours? That much? We were starving pretty bad there. There's no way we would have noticed. Plus, the funhouse has no windows. And there weren't any Monokuma announcements either. However, for what reason did the killer alter our perception of time? The reason is obvious. So they can lure out just Nekomaru. Not only Nekomaru? Right. If you messed with the clocks and used a specific thing, you definitely get Nekomaru to the tower alone, right? From there, the killer's plan was a splendid success. That's all it means. So that's the fifth time the killer also used a specific thing. If you're trying to learn Nekomaru, that specific thing is... Monokuma Tai Chi. I see! That's it. The killer made use of the Monokuma Tai Chi activity in the morning. How did they use it? We were required to go to Great Tower every morning at 7 a.m. for that activity, right? But if they messed with all the clocks inside the building, what would that do to us? We wouldn't be able to attend on time, but that wouldn't affect Nekomaru. His radio clock had the exact time. That's right. In doing so, the killer was able to lure him to the tower by himself at the precise time. And when I witnessed Nekomaru early in the morning... Yeah, he was heading to Tai Chi. If I recall, you witnessed Nekomaru around 5 a.m. And if that time was also two hours off, it should have been 7 a.m. Yeah, that's pretty much it. At that time, he was heading over to Monokuma Tai Chi, right on schedule. I see. Now that I think about it, I realize what Monokuma meant when he said those words. Ah! Too early! He didn't even ask you yet! How, <coughs> excuse me. Jeez, how outrageous! I also didn't expect everyone to ditch Monica with IG. But we're down late like this after all, so I guess it can't be helped. Oh wow, well, I am sick. I can't do Monica once. Including us, right? We thought we came to the tower on time, but in truth, it was way past the meeting time. Ah, jeez, that's well. How should I put it? Um, what was it? You know, tripping over a foot, or something like that. Are you talking about tripping over someone else's fault? Wrong! Too bad! You liar! I'm right! That's not it! It's incorrect! Th that's definitely the correct answer. You always get so stubborn like this. Let's just ignore the peanut gallery. Now that we've found out how the killer lured Nekomaru, the number of suspects has drastically decreased. Huh? Hey, why would that decrease the number of suspects? Don't be a friggin' liar! You'll know I'm not lying when you listen to what Fuyuhiko's going to say next. Huh? What the hell do you mean? You witnessed Nekomaru going toward the tower. Did something else happen after that? Are you talking about that alarm? Hmm. Alarm? A little while after I witnessed Nekomaru, the clock in the Strawberry House Lounge started going off. Plus, it was just before that rumbling sound occurred. That's it. So that's what it is. If Nekomaru died when the rumble happened, then whoever doesn't have an alibi at the time is the prime suspect. Really? Was there anyone who didn't have an alibi at that time? Most of us. I remember now. The sound was so loud I couldn't help bolting from my room. But there was one guy who never left the lounge. We were both on the same floor. It's pretty weird that bastard never came out of his guest room. Which means that person does not have an alibi for when Nekomaru fell? Who is it? Who's the bastard? Yeah, about that. Whoever doesn't have power by for that time, right? Uh, I'm so 
Wasn't there? It's you, right, Nagito? That's right. Nagito wasn't there. It's just me, Gundam, and Fuyuhiko. I to think back to that for a bit. You didn't come out, even though the alarm was going off like crazy. You weren't in your room, were you? If that's the case, where were you? Please say something. If you don't hurry up and answer, I'm gonna suicide dive you! If I may be frank, even if I wanted to go to the lounge, I couldn't. You couldn't? What do you mean? <laughs> it's merely the foolish talk of the Not only did I not hear the alarm, I never even heard that rumbling sound. Well, you didn't hear either. It's because of the room terrain. You're definitely fucking lying. Uh, however, that is also true for me. It is obvious that I did not hear the alarm in Strawberry House. But I did not hear the rumbling sound either. Is that not strange? I mean, everyone else heard it. To be honest, it's not just them. The same goes for me, too. That proves it. I was in a pretty deep sleep, so I thought that's why I couldn't hear it, but it wasn't that. I probably couldn't hear it at all. Couldn't hear it? What does that mean? You still don't know. It's the rooms. Think about what the three of us who didn't hear a sound have in common, and I'm sure you'll figure it out. Only people who didn't hear the rumbling noise of Dr. Toe, Sonia, and Shiaki. It is with these three have in common. It's also me to see that voice of the killer. This does not need to be a hangman's gambit. Sony and Chiaki, the three of you were staying in deluxe rooms, right? If I recall, the deluxe rooms are... The guest rooms are divided by quality gray. The deluxe room is soundproof and has excellent air insulation. The spare room may have social insulation, but still pretty decent. The crummy room has severe airflow and draft problems. The reason we could not hear the rumbling noise... That's right. It was because the deluxe rooms have superior sound insulation. You actually noticed that. Nice catch, Hajime. Are you using your ultimate reserve course student talent? Seriously, Nakia, what the hell is wrong with you? Now then, you guys must understand by now, right? The true identity of Nekomaru's killer. Hold on a sec. Why does that lead to who the killer is? Why? Well, that fact just now is a very important clue. 
and a decisive factor in identifying the killer. A decisive factor? Somehow I feel like I understand what that code means. Door Among Us? Door of Murder of Mario? Alright, it's, it's exactly what I think it is, right? person has an alibi. something I want to ask you. It can't be Gundam, please. Like, I didn't even think of it because I don't want it to be him. When the alarm rang at the Strawberry House Lounge, you rushed over there too, right? What's wrong with that? Right, he was in a deluxe room. If the bell of catastrophe rings throughout the night, it is the universe's providence to stop it. Why were you able to hear it? Hear what? I mean, you were also staying in a deluxe room, right? Nagito was staying in a deluxe room in the same house on the same floor, and he couldn't even hear it. So why were you able to hear that alarm? Now that you mention it... Gundam? There is only one possibility. You weren't in your room at the time. That's why, even though you were staying in a deluxe room, you still went to the lounge, am I right? Gundam, um, you have some sort of explanation, right? Please do, because I do not want it to be you. Gundam probably couldn't return to his room because of Fuyuhiko. Me? After you saw Nekomaru heading to the tower, you stayed at the lounge for a while, am I correct? Until the moment that alarm started ringing, right? 
If you were in the lounge for that long, the killer who had left earlier obviously wouldn't be able to go back. Even though Mekamaru's murder was a death trap that utilized the alarm in his chest, the killer still needed to prepare the murder in advance. Like putting Nekamaru in sleep mode and tying him up with the wire. In order to do that, the killer needed to be waiting for Nekamaru at the tower. Which means when Fuyuhiko witnessed Nekamaru, the killer was already at the tower. And once they tried to go back, they couldn't because Fuyuhiko was at the lounge. In their original plan, the killer should have returned to their room before the alarm in the lounge went off. And they were supposed to stay in their room. They weren't planning to come out and go to the lounge. Which means they wouldn't have heard the alarm or the rumbling sound, thus proving they were in the room, just like us. The best case scenario would have been if those two in the lounge had gone to check the deluxe rooms. After all, if they personally saw the killer sleeping in their room, it gives the killer a stronger alibi. Unfortunately, they failed to secure that alibi. Because... I was in the lounge. So the killer couldn't go back to their room, and ended up hearing the lounge's alarm. you come out? You should have hid till the excitement died down. If Gundam tried to hide, and if those two went to his room to check on him, he would have been found out. That would have been the worst possible outcome. That's why he couldn't just stay hidden. If those two had just checked the deluxe rooms as planned, that would have been ideal, but... How ironic. The moment Fuyuhiko set foot in the lounge, your plan was doomed. Gundam? Please, can you at least say something? Answer me this. Including myself in my four dark devas of destruction, how many ears do we possess? The answer is ten. That's right, I possess ten ears. That means I have five times the hearing of a normal human. The soundproof system here may as well not exist. Is that your argument? You bastard. Do you understand the situation you're in right now? D do not panic. The truth shall now commence. At the time, I left my room to go to the bathroom. By coincidence, I heard the alarm. That's right. That's all it was. The world is always so simple. Are you saying it was just a coincidence? Isn't that timing a little too perfect? Eh, not really. And yet, I'm being suspected by all of you. It seems it was actually horrible timing on my part. I see. You're still holding out. Well, you don't have to admit it. We're going to decide who the killer is with the majority vote anyway. So, why don't we just go ahead and start voting? It's obvious that Gundam is the killer. I don't buy it. I do not buy it for a second. Uh, hold on a sec. You know, Hajime, this class trial, this killing, it's merely the opening act, you know. Hey! What do you mean the class trial is just the opening act? Perhaps I should say it's just a farce? Just a boring farce. So boring, so stressful. I'm so painfully bored that I might develop stomach ulcers. Seriously, let's just hurry up and finish this before I collapse from poor health. Nagito, something definitely happened to you, didn't it? Mm -hmm. At some point during the investigation, your behavior became even weirder. What? What actually happened? Discover something? <laughs> well, let's just leave that fun for later. And finish this opening act already. Ah! You said opening act again! Uh, please hold on! 
I have yet to hear Gundam's rebuttal. But he's completely shut up. Perhaps he can't argue anymore. Gundam! <laughs> I was simply at a loss for words after being dumbfounded by your pathetic assumption. In fact, I shall deny the very basis. Your assumption has been wrong since the beginning. Since the beginning? Based on your assumption, I hung Nekomaru from the fourth floor of the tower and made the floor descend to the first floor. From there, after returning to Strawberry House, I was present when the alarm at the lounge went off, correct? Although going to and fro is busy enough as it is, how would I be able to travel between both houses anyway? I see. The contact elevator was broken. As I recall, the killer tampered with the Grape House control panel, which shut down the elevator. Plus, the stopped elevator should have been facing the Grape House side. If so, the human who used the elevator would have left it at Grape House. For these reasons, it's an indisputable fact that the killer destroyed the elevator at Grape House. And what's wrong with that? If the elevator was broken at Grape House, he wouldn't be able to return to Strawberry House. Uh, I'm not so sure about that one. However, I was already at Strawberry House. I was present when the alarm in the lounge started ringing. Which means your assumption is clearly wrong. Are you serious? And here I thought it's already been decided. <laughs> Have you learned your lesson, pitiful humans? You cannot overcome this contradiction. That's wrong. It's obviously wrong. That's what the contradiction is for. Let's just think it's a contradiction that can't be overcome. elevator was the only means of travel between the two houses I don't think so. as long as that elevator was broken your assumption collapses plus the elevator was broken at great house if the killer cannot return to strawberry house since I was at strawberry house at that time there's no question that the following crime is impossible. It would have been different if they had an accomplice. Or if there was a secret passageway. How much longer do you plan to lecture me? Why don't we stop this already? Secret passageway. Elevator was was to shoot at it. The only means of travel between the two houses. As long as that elevator was broken, your assumption collapses. Plus, the elevator was broken at Grape House. If the killer cannot return to Strawberry House... Since I was at Strawberry House at that time, there's no question that the following crime is impossible. It would have been different if they had an accomplice. Or if there was a secret passageway. How much longer do you plan to lecture me? Why don't we, we stop this already? That elevator was... You get secret passageway. The only means of travel between the two houses. No, it wasn't. No, that's wrong! We already know Nagito was able to get there without no, the elevator. No, there should have been another way to move between the two houses without the elevator. Such a method does not exist! Then why don't we ask the person who actually used that method? Nagito, you be useful for once. You're the only one! Nagito, you should know. What are you talking about? Don't play dumb. You appeared so suddenly that one time because you used that method, right?
There's a secret passage connecting the first floor of Strawberry House to the third floor of Grape House. Isn't that right? Jeez. Once again, I let the reserve course show up. But you're right. There's a door on the floor of the Octagon, which is on the first floor of Strawberry House. After I opened the door and went down, Surprise, surprise! I ended up in the Monokuma Archive, which is on the third floor of Grape House. Why am I not surprised? Meaning, the third floor and the fourth floor are actually connected. Plus, once you've cleared the final dead room once, you can pass through it as many times as you want. If they use that secret passage, they could have gone between the two houses as much as they want. Infinity Unlimited Flame! God damn it. However, what if the killer was unaware of the existence of the final dead room? There's no way they didn't know. That is merely an illusion you have fabricated from your own suspicion. If you value your life, you should stop with your scrutiny. There's no way I can stop. Did you say? Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. You're not the Hulk. Uh, no, these are useful. Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Or decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? I ram cuts. Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Or decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? I can't back down! I'm never ready for that. <laughs> Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? I can't back down! Oh, come on! <laughs> Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? I can't back down! <laughs> Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! 
your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? I can't back down! Ow! Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? I can't back down! I can't mash fast enough. Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? Okay, seriously, what am I doing wrong? Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? There we I go. already proved the secret passage exists. The secret passage was at the Octagon. Know the limits of your own reasoning! You say the killer went to the Octagon? Don't bark, you cur! If you don't at least pray to the key which dwells in the light! Know the limits of your own reasoning! You say the killer went to the Octagon? Don't bark, you cur! If you don't at least pray to the key which dwells in the light! It's gotta be the wire, then. Know the limits of your own reasoning! Oh, come on! I finally got somewhere. Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes, provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? I can't back down! Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? I can't back down! <laughs> Even
Even if the Turbid Box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? I can't back down! Even if the Turbid Box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? I can't back down! <laughs> Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, I have the answer. You could travel through multiple so planes. Pain. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? I can't back down! <laughs> Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? There we go. I already proved the secret passage exists. The secret passage was at the Octagon. Know the limits of your own reasoning. You say the killer went to the Octagon? Don't bark, you cur! If you don't want to drown in the maelstrom of blood... There we go. Allow me to cut through those words! The wire used to string up Nekomaru's body. The hammer that looked like the weapon. And the chain on the door in the tower. Those are all the items that weren't in Funhouse. Where did the killer obtain them? The only place I can think of is the Octagon. Please, there were various weapons and tools there. I'm pretty sure I saw stuff like wires, hammers, and chains too. Since those items were used in the crime, there's no doubt that the killer went to the Octagon. If that's the case, they obviously know about the secret passage too, right? No, no, no. And I'm gonna save here. You never know when something's gonna screw up. It seems this is the end. Normally, we'd end up listening to Hajime lecture us with a very long summary of the case. But there's no reason to waste any more time on this opening act. So I'm going to end this right now. Hey, what are you... First of all, by messing with all the clocks in the building, Gundam tried to lure only Nekomaru. The elevator was probably broken by that point. Thanks to that, Nekomaru wasn't able to go to Grape Tower which was supposed to be the meetup point. So he tried going over to Strawberry Tower, just like we did when we found out the elevator was broken. Well, it's obvious he'd attempt that. At that time, we didn't know the two towers were the exact same place. Also, the button in Strawberry Hall wasn't broken, so he was easily able to enter Strawberry Tower. But surprise, Gundam was waiting for Nekomaru's arrival. Hold on. If Nekomaru didn't go to Strawberry Tower, what would the killer have done then? Their plan was a balancing act of uncertainties. But even if they failed, they probably wouldn't have minded. They can just greet everyone the next morning as if nothing happened, and come up with a different plan. And, without such a risky plan, they wouldn't have been able to lure him at all. I'm going to continue summarizing the case, okay? Through this, Gundam successfully lured Nekomaru to Strawberry Tower. There's no way he could fight head-on with the robotic Nekomaru. So by pressing the Good Night button, he rendered Nekomaru powerless without fighting him. Hold on! You... what did you just say? That... I didn't battle? Hmm? What's wrong with that? Don't... mess with me! 
Don't mess with me! I cannot ignore those words! Oh, Why are it. you angry all of a sudden? You fools! Do not understand! You don't understand at all! Ha! You make me laugh! After all this time, you still don't understand anything at all! I don't understand anything. What does that mean? It appears I cannot finish just yet. Maybe I'm just a human destined for hell. However, I cannot finish just yet. I cannot finish! What do you intend to do? It's obvious! I'm going to destroy your illusory assumptions! Are you saying you still have more? You still have room to argue? Your words. You said I press Nekomaru's good night button. However, that button was on the back of Nekomaru's neck. To press it, I'd have to get behind him. It's not easy to get the drop on Coach Nekomaru. Yeah, but we already saw your hamster. It's even more difficult if it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Just as I thought, truly frail, succumbing so easily to this simple argument, it was just a mere illusion. <laughs> if you want to set me up as the killer, at least surpass your own human limitations. That's wrong, Gunner. You're the one who's wrong. <laughs> Such a wonderful line. However, I cannot say that I'm satisfied. Listen well, I shall teach you two tips for making someone admit their defeat. First, you must crush them with your own overwhelming power. And as for the other, you must provide a reason that will persuade that human. You have not fulfilled either of those yet. So you really don't want to admit it. That just is requested. Body with argument, I'll leave you no choice but to be persuaded. And I was afraid of this. I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! With him! Crushed as David prophesies! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! With him! Crushed as David prophesies! Show me the cadaver! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crushed as David prophesies! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crushed as David prophesies! For the Tanaka Empire! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crushed as David prophesies! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crushed as David prophesies! Show me the cadaver! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crush as David prophesies! It's Nekobaru's back. Do you really think Darn. I can get behind him so easily? Oh, damn it. I just did that. I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! Wither! Crush as David prophesies! It's Nekobaru's back. Do you really think I can get behind him so easily? This is the end! Those will be dark heaps of destruction. Even if you didn't get behind Nekomaru, you should have been able to press the button on the back of his neck. As long as you have the power of the hamsters you keep with you! Oh? Are you seriously saying he used his hamsters to press the button on the back of Nekomaru's neck? Or he's something to open the door. Of course that'd be impossible for a normal hamster, but it would have been possible for Gunny. In fact, we saw that with our very own eyes, right? Yep. Good assault opened uh, that door. Now that 
you mention it. After Ibuki was killed in the music venue, one of Gundam's hamsters retrieved the piece of wallpaper from the baton lighting, right? Hey, with your friends and their exceptionally smart brains, it must have been possible to secretly get one of them behind Megamaru and press the button on the back of his neck. How about it, Gundam? <laughs> <laughs> Not just myself, but you actually brought up how splendid my subordinates are. <sighs> I have no recourse but to admit it. Admit it? Did you say you admit it? It appears I've obtained a one-way ticket to hell. Fine! Then you must trample me underfoot and advance. Victory can only be built upon a foundation of corpses. You cannot find peace without sacrifice anywhere. Now, trample this life. Trample it as though it were mere trash on the side of the road. Pull the curtain strings of this worthless performance with your own two hands. Oh, Gundam, no. I don't have that yet. Here's the last one for like Norco Mori, because we can go. I'll be thinking we can get Kamaru. Don't have that. Of course, we just is. It's just for us to see.
Why? Why, Gundo? Let's first go over the many tricks the killer prepared before they committed the crime. First, they destroyed the contact elevator. This separated Nagito and the others in Strawberry House from our group in Grape House. Next, they lured Nekomaru out by himself by turning back all the clocks in the Funhouse by two hours. Additionally, in order to secure an alibi, the killer went to the Strawberry House Lounge and set the wall clock's alarm to 5.30 a.m. After finishing their preparations, the killer went to Strawberry Tower with the necessary tools in hand. They obtained these tools from the Octagon, which you can enter once you clear the final deck. This means the killer discovered the secret of the Funhouse faster than anybody else. That secret being, Strawberry House and Grape House are actually the same building. On the morning of the incident, Nekomaru woke up and headed over to Grape Tower for a specific reason. There, Fuyuhiko, who was at the lounge by coincidence, witnessed Nekomaru. According to Fuyuhiko's testimony, that was around 5 a.m., but... By that point, the killer had already messed with our perception of time. In actuality, Fuyuhiko witnessed Nekomaru at 7 a.m. That's also the same time Monokuma Tai Chi begins. Nekomaru went to Grape Tower to participate in that. However, because the contact elevator was broken, Nekomaru was unable to go to Great Tower. So he decided to try going to Strawberry Tower. But, the killer was waiting for him there. With the power of hamsters, they were able to press the good night button on the back of Nekomaru's neck. This forced him to enter sleep mode, rendering him immobile. From there, the killer began preparing to use the ultimate weapon. First, they set the alarm in Nekomaru's chest to 7.30 a.m. so he'd wake up. Then they tied him up with a metal wire, tied the tip of the wire into a loop, and hung it on the doorknob. After leaving Strawberry Tower, the killer then destroyed the door button to Strawberry Hall. They did this to keep us from entering Strawberry Tower and to keep us from discovering the secret of the building structure that they used to kill Nekomaru. Then, they used the secret Octagon passageway to travel to Grape House. After arriving at Grape Hall, they pressed the button to open the door to the tower. When that happened, the elevator-like floor of the tower began descending and Nekomaru's body was still inside, dangling upside down in mid-air from the wire. The killer entered Grape Tower to see if their setup was successful, and placed a hammer on the floor to look like the weapon, then wrapped a chain around the back door. This was done to make us falsely believe we couldn't enter the tower from Strawberry Hall. With this, the killer finished their setup and tried to go back to their room using the secret passage. I come to. So they could craft their alibi when Nekomaru died from the fall. But something unexpected happened. Fuyuhiko, who saw Nekomaru earlier, was still at the lounge. As a result, the killer couldn't return to their room, and with no options available, time ran out.
The lounge's wall clock alarm started ringing at 5.30. Well, actually 7.30. To avoid a worst case scenario, the killer was forced to appear in front of Fuyuhiko with the others. When the wall clock's alarm rang, that was also the same time Nekomaru was waking up. He woke up while he was still hanging upside down, so he couldn't help but sway his body powerfully. Originally, the loop of wire was only supposed to slip off the doorknob. But because there was a heavier load than expected, the doorknob ended up breaking. Nekomaru fell from the fourth floor all the way to the first floor. He crashed into the pillar, which decapitated him on impact, and died. The sound of Nekomaru's impact echoed throughout the funhouse. However, by this point, the killer's plan was about to fail, thanks to the broken doorknob and Fuyuhiko. Meaning, the killer is someone who wouldn't have heard the alarm if they were in the deluxe room. They also wouldn't have been able to return to their guest room, because Fuyuhiko was at the lounge. That someone is Gundam Tanaka. I can't think of anyone else but you. That beautiful post. Why does it have to be him? <laughs> splendid. <laughs> that was splendid. For a mere human, you did quite well. Stop. Stop it already. Stop using weird words to avoid the truth. Or I'll friggin' kill you myself! I cannot believe it. I just cannot believe you. You killed Nekomaru? I cannot believe something like that! You don't wish to forgive me? Do you feel regret? Then finish it! Cast your impure votes for Gundam Tanaka! My beloved, deadly foes, let the voting time begin! Why? isn't all that exciting. Now then, please pull the lever in front of you and cast your vote. Who will be chosen as the blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? Please pull the lever! Crap! I bit my tongue at the most important part! Why, why did it have to be done though? Would be bad if I bit my tongue again, it's so awesome, pretty slowly. Judging from the results. Yahoo! You guys were correct once again. Day four in a row without any mistakes is a splendid achievement. <laughs> That's right, the one who killed the robotic Nikomaru in the amazing funhouse yeah was Gundam Tanaka. Nice! Yeah, I said all, all that without biting my tongue. Now then. Go to decide who the killer is. Let's do the execution already. Hold on. I'm sure the cross trial's finished, but the beginning is over. You can't finish yet until we hear from Gundam. Jeez. What he says, it won't change a thing. I have no right to stop you either, so do whatever you like. Follow my tears. Why do you want to talk to one who has lost? Those are mere thieves, so it would just be unnecessary for me to say something. Listen well! That's what I would like to say, but for honor's sake, I should correct one thing. Correct? Okay, 
place that I made Vekamaru powerless without fighting him. That, however, is a great mistake. Huh? Fine. Vekamaru did fight, that is no mistake. Because he fought, he lost and died. D damn it! Lost and died? This, too, must be the will of causality. If he's just trying to cling to life, there are many ways he could have done so. However, he did not allow that. You! What do you mean, explain? <laughs> Fine then, then I shall reveal it all. Let's make history. In the final dead room, I discovered the secret of the funhouse. I devised a killing plan utilizing that secret. Different with all the clocks in the building, I succeeded in Lord Nekomaru to the tower. And this is what happened. Nekomaru and I were alone in the tower, staying face to face with one another. I should say I expected as much from Nekomaru. Since my subtle killing intent had easily understood the situation. And we had ourselves a stare now. In that situation, if he went to run away, it would make it easy for him to do so. He would run away, or even call for help. But he did not turn his back to me. Instead, he chose a fight that risked life and death. That is. A fight that risked life and death? Let me tell you this. He was serious, too. He gave it his all to try to kill me. Huh? <laughs> if I had died instead, the mystery surrounding the cage would have been even more complicated. You'd never know why I, the victim, went to the tower by myself. I can see it! Nobody would know that the victim, me, was actually the one who planned the whole thing. Could it be? Nicomaru really did that? <laughs> Sensing even my subtle killing intent, as expected of you, Nekomaru. The scorching, stinging, tense atmosphere! I've been a team manager for so long, I'd nearly forgotten this! This is great! What a comforting atmosphere! Hmm, that's a great one. And what is your reason? Do you intend to resolve this situation by killing me? <laughs> <laughs> I am the Warlock, Gundam Tanaka! Heroes, Lords of Darkness, and even the gods themselves flee from me! I do not cling to any trivial reason. I'm simply going to kill you because your very existence is an annoyance! <laughs> You'll drench your soul with evil until the bitter end, huh? Splendid! In response to your spirit, I shall kill you with all of my might! I won't go easy on you! Don't even think about holding back! Don't waste your breath on cowardly tactics! Give me everything you got! Nekomoro Nidai, your blood will drench the foundation of my empire! That is... Oh, why? Why did you fight? We are all friends. Why wouldn't you stop this? If both sides agreed, it was still wrong. <laughs> I will not argue. I have no intention of forcing my values upon you. Let me tell you this. However, I must say this. What's the point of living if you're just waiting until you finally die? You weakling! There's nothing courageous about that. There's abandonment of a mere feeling of resignation. Just wait till we start with death. Fall, my tears. Ever since we were locked inside that building, everyone had been dominated by the feeling of abandonment. However, nothing is born from resignation, that's the clear reason to give up. If you flinch, you will die! Giving up on life, that's just an insult to life itself. Let me ask. You fools heard the term doggy dog? Um. Cannibalism? No. Fine. In zoology, cannibalism is a commonly observed phenomenon. Many creatures at some point in their lifespan engaged in cannibalism. Listen well! That's what it means to live. Yeah, actually, he, he does raise hamsters. They are known to eat. 
other hamsters, especially their own young. So killing for the sake of living is evil, then we'll giving up on life itself. I shall engulf this world. The world will consider that justice, and I will fight that world with every last fiber of my being. Giving up on life and choosing death is nothing but a blasphemy toward life. I renounce you! It's a violation of the natural order. It's the arrogance of humanity. You. Are you saying all that to try and justify what you did? But... Sounds like Nick and Morgan felt the same too. That's why they fought, right? Damn it. Fine. That man had the courage to die when he needed to die. That's why he challenged me for that. <laughs> Regardless, as I've already said or not, to the force my values upon you, fools. I betrayed you all. That's the absolute truth. Fall, my tears. But, even so, do you think it's a better alternative to slow, slowly starving to death here? Oh. The belief is why you commit your crime? You... What about the final dead room? Did you do the Russian roulette too? Let's make history. Unlike Nagito, I only did it once, but... <laughs> After my battle with Dekamaru, that was mere child's play. Well? You know, after listening to you talk for a while, I'm starting to think that... Well, it's also because you unexpectedly admit your crime without much resistance. Good, um, don't tell me you did sacrifice yourself for our sake, did you? He totally did. Oh. Suicide by murder. <laughs> I can't believe you'd ask such a foolish question. My name is Gundam Tanaka! Just who do you think I am? I am Gundam Tanaka, history's greatest monster. My cursed existence is feared by all mankind. There's no way I'd sacrifice myself for the sake of you fools. Fade like dust in the wind. Not in a million, not in a billion, not in ten thousand billion years. Pandemonium is impossible. Is that it? Then I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> now then, let's be rid of this foolish talk. It's about time the fun started. <laughs> Monokuma, let us begin. Yes, indeed. Yay, got it. <laughs> I have prepared a special punishment for the ultimate breeder, Gunnar Tadaka. Please wait! This is, this is just too much. I beg of you! Please, Monokuma, please help Gundam. Huh? Miss Sonia? I beg of you! How pitiful. Sonia. That just unrefined is stopping a man from going to his death and does not permit a noble such as yourself. Uh. Gundam. Hmm. Um, it's fine to start for reals, right? Fine. Yes, I do not mind, however. What is it, my four dark devas of destruction? Are you worried about me? Oh, my feared four dark devas of destruction. That is not like you at all. However, there is no need to fear. In this world, I am only a temporary visitor. I was simply visiting for a moment, and now that my duty is complete, I must return to the darkness. That is why, until the very end, pride, conceit, courage, insolence, fearful of nothing, daunted by nothing, let us laugh uproariously! <laughs> That is Gundam Tanaka! I shall stick with my evil until the very end! Open Sesame Pandemonium! I shall fill hell with true hell! <laughs> Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! Oh. 
like a stampede, and I cannot read the rest of that. Can't see if I am crying. It's Gundam. No, no. Even after Gundam is gone, the spirit of his parting words still linger deep in our chest. Don't give up on life. Did I misunderstand what he meant? Or what's the right thing to do? I don't know. No matter how much I think about it, I don't know if I'll ever be able to answer that. Damn it. Damn it. I'm so pissed off, I need to throw something. D damn it! You all spent so much time worried about each other and thanks to that, things end up like this. You're all full of shit, every last one of you. The biggest piece of shit is me. The worst. Why am I so weak? Oh. Such a downer, clearly. Still, even though we feel this way, we still gotta do our very best. You are right. This time around, we must move forward. We must continue to live and believe in our friends. If not, you are right. God will most likely crawl his way out of hell, and I presume you will be very cross with us. You're right. You're right. We shouldn't just stand here. It's not like this is over. We still have to do it. We just have to finish this. So your friends have died, we need to finish this once and for all. So, don't just stand there. Sit up and walk. Move forward. Live. If you don't, who would have found died will have died in vain. You can't allow that. Hey! Hey! So how long are you guys going to stand around chattering? Class trial is over, so it's okay for you to hurry back to Jabberwock Island. <laughs> However, the Killing School trip will proceed as usual, so make sure you know that. Wait! Hold on! How, how much longer are you going to keep doing this? <laughs> Seriously, how long is he going to keep doing this? How long is this going to continue? Now then. <laughs> Alright, after feeling down for so long, I finally feel refreshed. It's free. I can eat some food. Hey, hey! That food shift is too damn fast. It's not like that. Well, you know, it's like Gundam Deck Mars Zed. <laughs> so we used to live, right? Huh. She's certainly something else. <laughs> Seriously, I'm starving. Hey, hey. Then let's go back for now and eat. Then after we're full, let's sleep as much as we want. Right? Let's do our best again. Yeah, you're right. This, the class trials come to an end, and once again, we return to Jabberwock Island. Since the group has definitely diminished, despite that, if it was just the rest of us, we did our best to help meet and fun together. Of course, our optimism was only superficial. At that moment, we were able to forget about the dark despair looming before us. However, the only thing I was worried about was him. He wasn't there. He suddenly disappeared from our sight. <laughs> yep, I'm definitely lucky. I expect to obtain so many valuable things for some impression of lead. 
<laughs> so then I was able to learn the identity of our true enemy. For everyone else, too. It's just too funny, I mean, no one could tell that I was lying. It's the way they found out just Jimmy's information. He actually lied? Well... Guess they're too busy with other matters. Maybe they've reached their limit? Regardless, someone's saved. It's too complicated if they found out. <sighs> anyway... I can't forgive this. Damn it! You should never be forgiven. So I can let this one run loose, I'll be one stop this once for all. It should cost me my life. It's obvious! For sake of hope, I cannot ignore this. Madakuma appears! Alright, Madakuma has arrived. Who summoned me? Now then. Thanks for coming. What's this? My slowly little Nikito. Are you all alone tonight too? What's the matter? So what's up? Your face looks scary. <sighs> I see, so you can tell. Hmm? Oh, uh, perhaps you found out who the traitor is? <laughs> It'll be well. Wow. <coughs> so what I'd like to say, but unfortunately I haven't learned that yet. Hmm. I see. So you, you don't know, huh? So the file showdown is going to take a little more time. Hello. So, why'd you summon me anyway? Were you finally going to mess your love? Hey. Is something I really need to ask you. It's about the special prize for the final game. Hmm? Oh, yeah? What about it? Just information about 16 people in the file I received. Oh, isn't that weird? Say what? What's weird? You don't even know? Well, there's a trader from the Future Foundation high among us, right? Clean that person that told them our students would be 16, right? Isn't that right? This file contains documents are created at Hobie Mini Academy, right? Of course! That's right, I just reused the stuff that the former headmaster spent a lot of time making. But... This file even contains information about the traitor. Was that person also a former student of Hobie Mini Academy? Who knows? <laughs> I wonder. Hey. Could it be? <laughs> you're doing to use some false information in the file? Are you trying to keep us from learning the trans identity by obtaining this information? Hmm? What's wrong with that? It's my job to heat things up. It's okay if I do something small like that, right? Well... That's not my point. Right? The point is, you already know who the traitor is. Hmm? What's wrong with that? You're getting all riled up! Well, you're supposedly correct when you say I knew who the traitor was all along. Even though I know who it is, why do you think I ignored it on purpose? Hmm. It's just like Monami after losing your magic stick. The curse of existence means absolutely nothing to me. <laughs> the existence means nothing, huh? No, no! Well, that's just how I feel. I'm sure you guys feel somewhat different. Shing! After all, that person's an evil future foundation lackey is putting you guys in this awful stuff. It's not entirely true, I didn't really come here to fight or anything like that. <laughs> Instead, I came here to offer my cooperation, you know. Huh? Cooperation? Hey. Your purpose is to fill everyone outside with despair, right? That's why you're intentionally letting the traitor do as they please, right? Yep. I... If that's the case, I might be able to cooperate with someone, too. Right? Now, in exchange, I'm gonna know who the traitor is. Interesting, very interesting. No, no, no! I'm just it's a big no no. Unbelievable. I mean, I want to make everyone in your group feel despair, that includes you too. Well, well I knew you would say that. Hmm. Besides, I just won't be able to handle the sadness when you definitely train you later on. <laughs> so I thought is so right through me. You're right. Or what situation I find myself in, like before my thinking will never change. Great absolute hope that shines brightly to step fire to myself and despair exists. <laughs> you're right, you're a true believer of hope after all. I say that belief reminds me of that person for some reason. And there we go, talking about Makoto again. Huh? Reminds you? <laughs> I know who you're talking about, but if someone is worthless, he reminds you of some other person. Must be 
extremely unlucky. You would say that. Like. But you're just as unlucky, right? I mean, the fact that you're even involved like this. Wow. If I actually think I'm very lucky. Say what? You don't know? Will you say that coming across this much despair is a rather rare opportunity? You can rely on anyone on silent, that's why I have to be the one who does it. If you can eliminate the spirit from the silent, I won't be a step ladder anymore. I'll become true hope. <laughs> From an existence that could even be called ultimate hope. <laughs> if you are alike, you definitely remind me of him. Hey. There's one more thing I want to ask you. Hmm? See? What are you waiting for on this island? <laughs> so right again, you're definitely waiting for someone on this island. This person you're waiting for already on this island? Hey. Well, answer my question. Th that's... If that's the case, that person's already on this island. <laughs> Wouldn't that be exciting? For destruction is the achievement. I've got his earring. Why did it have to be him? Oh. Well, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. That's the end of this stream. I'll see you next time. Have a great time wherever you may be. Bye, guys.